So this is a CT Cine image. Basically, it's a volumetric image. I'm going to be starting from top, that is from the epices, and I'm going to go to the, towards the diaphragm. So I want you to have a look at this case, and I want you to make your own observations. So I think by now you might have all seen this case in complete totality. Now let me just show you the important observations on this cine image and then be looking at some of the representative uh, still images from the case as well. So when I'm talking about the epices, do you see any abnormality? Remember our discussion on abnormal pathologies or in ILDs. First is reticulations, look for lines. Second is nodules, look for dots. And third is look for downlass opacity or increased opacification. Fourth is look for abnormal hypodensity in the lung parenchyma, which may be due to mosaic attenuation. So let's have a look. When we look from the top, I think very easy to identify that there are excessive number of lines in this image. I hope that all of you can see these, these, these. There are everywhere. There are lines which are located in the lung parenchyma. So we do have a reticular pattern and this reticular pattern is taking the shape of interlobular septal thickening because it is more hexagonal. I hope you can see. Not typically hexagonal, but more so hexagonal. Interlobular septal thickening will be much more painful and will be much more finer. It will be lace-like or net-like. So let us look ahead. Now here we see that there is some amount of broad fibrosis resulting in honeycombing type of an appearance. But looking at one image, it is difficult to say. Let us go ahead and go down. And as we go down, I hope now we can see something else. We already looked at the interlobular septal thickening. I want you to have a look here. Now, again, there is a fine, lace-like, net-like appearance of the reticular opacities in this area. So, because these are linear opacities, reticular opacities in a lace-like fashion and very fine, very small, micro. So, this is intralobular septal thickening. When I'm going further down, I can see that here, there is an area of slightly increased attenuation in the lung parenchyma, probably patchy ground glass opacity. And when I go down further, now is the area of exuberant honeycombing that I can see here as well as here, which is admixed with some ground glass attenuation. There's one more thing. Here, I see that there is an area of cavitation as well in the left lower lobe, admixed with all the other changes that we've talked so far. Now we're seeing that there are some complications to the disease process as well. I want you to have a look here. Now here, the lung parenchymal attenuation is not homogeneous. I hope all of you would agree with me. Look at this lung. It looks completely black, completely lucent. While here, there are some areas which are appearing slightly hyper attenuating like this, this and some areas which are appearing almost normal attenuating. So here we are having ground glass opacities that is not focal air trapping because the pathology is in increased attenuation if you compare it with this lung parenchyma or you can even compare it with the bronchus. We've discussed about the dark bronchus sign. So because it is appearing brighter or denser than bronchus, it is definitely abnormal. It is an area of ground glass opacity. Then as we go down further, again, the diagnosis is pretty certain. Now there are multiple honeycomb cysts which are present. Now, why are these honeycomb cysts? These are honeycomb cysts because we already discussed honeycomb cysts, differentiating them from bronchic cysts, differentiating from emphysema. Honeycomb cysts will be seen as multiple least tagged cystic areas located in the periphery, will have shared walls, and they will be seen in multiple layers. They will be seen in multiple layers extending from the pleura up to the center or the hilar region. So you can see that multiple stacks of layers here exactly that you can see, one over the other. So this is nothing but this is honeycomb that is for sure that we are having honeycombing. So these are all the signs that we could pick up. But one important sign that was left is bronchic tasis. I want you to have a look at this bronchus. Does, does this bronchus look tapering to you? No. So our definition of bronchic tasis when we were talking about traction bronchic tasis was that should be a non-tapering bronchus. That is after the origin of bronchus or after the bifurcation of bronchus, even after 2 centimeters, the bronchus does not show any tapering or narrowing. It is a case of bronchic tasis. Secondly, if you see any bronchial structure along the peripheral most part of the lung. So here, if you see here exactly, we can see that it, this dilated bronchus can be traced up to the periphery. If it is traced up to the peripheral one centimeter of the lung parenchyma, it is also definitional bronchiectasis. So this is classical traction bronchiectasis. Here we can see ground glass opacities also and interlobular and intralobular septal thickening as well. So we have made so many observations. So if you can make all these observations, almost half your work is done then nothing else is going to be left because the risk of differentials in ILDs is very, very less. We just characterize, characterized ILDs in various patterns and the rest of it is basically the work of the clinician along with us. Like we'll have to have a clinical integration as well. 
now that we looked at the case in totality let us have a look at the few important representative images from this case and let's discuss what were the important findings once again so these are the three basic most important images from this volumetric scan that i'm showing so what we can see we can see i'll just magnify this for you we can see that there are honeycomb cysts which are located peripherally stacked one over the other and they're bilaterally almost symmetrical and they're associated with some areas of ground glass opacities but if i ask you is the predominant pattern honeycombing or reticulation or ground glass opacity again we'll have to weigh between the two are on one side some of you may say the predominant pattern is reticulations and in reticulations we can have all sorts of things like honeycombing i'll use the word h for honeycombing along with traction wrong egg this i'll use i'll use the word t for that and the third one is septal thickening so i'll use the word s for septal thickening while there is a second group of you who might say that the predominant pathology is ground glass opacification so i want you to vote or in fact i want you to choose one of them which of the two do you think is the predominant pathology predominant pathology means which is more extensive which is the most exuberant pathology in this particular scan so i hope majority of you after having such a lot of discussion will say that the predominant pathology is reticulation and there are patchy areas of honeycombing which again form a very minor part of the lung panicamic pathology rather than the major one so once the first important observation that we made is the predominant pattern is a reticular pattern and in the reticular pattern we can see all the three things we are seeing honeycombing we are seeing traction bronchiectasis and we are seeing septal thickening and all these signs are signs of fibrosis so the second important answer that we've done first answer was is are we dealing with an ild obviously because all the patterns are there we're dealing with ild second important thing is the second important question that we need to answer uh, is what is the predominant pattern so that we've answered the predominant pattern is that reticular pattern reticular pattern associated with reticulation the third important question we were asked was whether it is a fibrosing or a non fibrosing ild so it's very clear that it's a fibrosing ild now talking about the observations what are the observations so observations we've already talked about there is definite there is evidence of a diffuse lung disease where the predominant pattern is reticular pattern in form of interlobular and intralobular septal thickening throughout the lung parenchyma most marked at lung bases where we can see there is a subpleural basal predominance of honeycombing there is associated traction bronchiectasis patchy areas of ground glass opacification and a cavitary lesion in the left lower lobe so this quite much formulates your report and gives every information that the clinician needs in the impression you were right findings are supportive of a fibrosing ild now what is the pattern this is the most important what is the diagnosis so we have a pro probable list of differentials do you think it is a uip you do you think it's an nsip you do you think it is something else now there is a lot of things which come in this something else but right now for your ease because we are starting this case i just want to give you a hint that so whether it is uip or whether it is nsip now the answer in this case is uip or usual interstitial pneumonia and there are so many findings in this case which favor the possibility of uip let us try to decipher all of them so what we've talked about we've talked about reticulations that is true we've talked about honeycombing traction bronchiectasis and septal thickening but what we have talked about is the distribution this is very very important in fact i should tell you the entire diagnosis in hrct or ilds is going to be based upon this distribution only when we going to talk about fibrosing ilds so distribution here is predominantly i've already used that word if you would have heard me say the distribution is sub plural basal so if there is a disease which starts off in the basal aspects of the lungs and it is predominant in sub plural regions where honeycombing is also present it is very much likely to be uip in fact this is the most important differentiating factor between uip and other type of fibrosing ilds which do not fall under the uip pattern if you see that there is a sub plural dominance predominantly in the lung bases and the epicelles are relatively spare in other words some books also mention it as increasing apico basal gradient you have different fancy words for it but the crux of the matter is the same the apex is relatively less involved and the bases are the most involved 